And welcome to Senior Circuit. We're so glad to have you with us. We have a, a very important topic and some great information that we're going to be passing. Today I have Captain Mike Anzalone with the City of Somerville Fire Prevention Bureau. Boy, that's a mouthful, yes, uh, Mike. And um, Captain Anzalone, thank you. Welcome to the show. Uh, you, we family. appreciate you being here. A lot of great information. First of all, tell us a little bit about yourself, how long you've been a firefighter, um, the City of Somerville, all your career. Tell us sure. a little bit. Um, I joined the fire department in 1994, so I have 19 years on the job. Uh, currently, I'm the captain of the Fire Prevention Bureau. We have six members in the uh, Prevention Bureau, Bureau uh, unit. They go out and they inspect all the buildings in the city and keep up the fire codes and work on fire safety plans throughout the city. And so that's really an important job, and I know um, you just had somebody who recently saved a building and a yes, occupancy. Yes, yes, Lieutenant um, O'Donovan um, was uh, inspecting a building that needed to be brought up to code, and he made sure it was brought up to code. Um, sometimes people don't want to do things as quick as we want them to do, and Lieutenant O'Donovan was on top of things, and... They had a fire then the very next day, and everybody was able, able to evacuate the building, and we had no injuries and no fatalities, and that's, that was wonderful. And that's the kind of stuff that you guys do Absolutely. down there that makes it safe for us Absolutely. to live in, in where we work, play, live, all that. Yes, that's so exactly really what the important. Bureau is in charge of. Excellent, excellent. So um, tell me, what how did you get started with thinking about doing some stuff with the senior center? Well, you, Cindy, had asked me to speak to the seniors at one of the breakfasts, I believe, mm -hmm. and yeah. it just got me thinking that you know, we could do something for the seniors that may not be able to get their smoke detectors replaced, batteries changed. Uh, a lot of the seniors are, we don't want them on standing on chairs, replacing batteries, things like that. So it just came to me that maybe we should ask the federal government to send some funds so we could do this program. And before we get into that grant and what we're going to do about it, tell us some safety features that are really important. And the reason we asked you to begin with was because we had some fatalities with seniors. And you came to us with some great advice for seniors. And I know you've talked a little bit about this sure. again, and it's getting to be October, sure. which is Fire Prevention Month. That's right. And we should always do what? Well, first of all, check the batteries in your smoke detectors. There's an old saying, smoke detectors save lives, and that's for sure it's true. So check the batteries, make sure your smoke detectors are working, test your smoke detectors to see if they're working. Um, if you have questions, you can call the Fire Prevention Bureau if you, you think that they're in the wrong place, we can always help you with that. Uh, most importantly is to check your smoke detectors. Make sure you have working smoke detectors and working CO detectors in your home. And CO detectors are important, and a Absolutely. lot of people don't think or realize how important they are because carbon monoxide is a silent. Yeah, it's just, they non call it the silent, silent deadly killer. It's uh, you can't smell it, taste it, see it, um, but it's there if it's there in quantities that could make you sick, ill, or even uh, you could you could die from it. So that's something you want to have. You want to have a working carbon monoxide detector on every level of your home including the basement, and that's also should be checked. The batteries should be checked. And some some other safety features we've talked about is clothing and those types of safety, you know, fire in a pan. That kind, do you want to elaborate a little sure, bit about that? Sure, especially for some of the seniors out there. Um, there's an, we had a fatality not too long ago. The woman, unfortunately, she caught her sleeve moving a teapot, I believe it was, or something like that. I'm not exactly sure, but... And she caught some of her clothes on fire, and she succumbed to the smoke. And it was tragic. And uh, those are the type of things you want to do when you're reaching over a hot stove is to roll your sleeves up or tuck them back. Um, you want to check the smoke detectors, obviously. Uh, trip and fall hazards, that's another thing the seniors need to be aware of. Using zip cords or what we call extension cords all over the house. Uh, uh, heaters. Space heaters, a lot of the seniors like to use the space heaters, keep the temperature down in the rest of the rooms they're not using. Mm -hmm. You don't want those within three feet of any combustibles. Don't, don't put them near your blankets, near your bed, near your couch. And obviously smoking. Smoking is a big one. Um, smoking in bed, that can cause fires, obviously. Smoking on the back porch, you got to make sure you keep your smoking material uh, contained. And the other thing about the um, heaters, and I know this sticks in my mind because you talked about this at our breakfast about the fire hazard. Uh, what happens is you flip your bedding and it hits the... Sure, 
Sure. A heater. Uh, if you have one of those radiant smoke, that t- smoke heaters, I mean, I'm sorry, radiant heaters to keep uh, keep your room warm, you can put your bedding right on that and Next thing catch you know, it on fire and up it goes. So we right. want to make sure you're very safe with those. And obviously the other thing is about newer products because it's so some of those old products sure. aren't up to code. Sure. And it may be time to get rid of the old space heater and uh, update your smoke detectors. And if it's been 20 years... Uh, they may not be up to code. They also may just be tired of working all the time and wearing out. So you all listed. You want to make sure your any electronic appliance you buy is you all listed. Right. And that's a little tag that's on the, that's the cord. That's correct. And if that cord is getting hot, that's an indication something's wrong. Absolutely. If it's running running hot, you're going to catch may, may catch something on fire. You don't want to run it under a rug. You don't want to run it under your furniture. And you want to make sure that it's working properly. It was interesting. After the breakfast we had, somebody came up to me and said, I don't understand. All I do is vacuum over that that cord. So <laughs> when you're doing that, right? Yeah, you, I think we you, got a good laugh out of that <laughs> one. Exactly. Yeah. You're wearing that cord down, correct? Sure, absolutely. And then what happens? Vacuuming on it, stepping on it. If you fray the cord, you, you, you get loose the insulation, you'll have an arc, and arc can cause a fire. And next thing you know, you have something going in your house. It was like, are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty funny. Oh. But those are, those are just some of the questions that we get and um, something to think about. You may not think about it in your daily life. And I'll tell you, it you don't think about it, especially if your house is hardwired. And my when I did my first floor over, I did hardwire smoke detector. Very good. And it's dual, so it has the battery and the hardware. However, it went off the other night and scared the heck out of me. I it was did like, its job. I was running around like a maniac, <laughs> like checking everything. It did its job. And then job. It, it was like a quick beep, and then it went off, and then I you know, I couldn't smell anything, couldn't see anything. Next thing I know, it went off again. So I opened the door, which I don't know why I opened the door, but uh, but it really did like- Did you call the fight about it? I didn't, but I ran <laughs> right down to the store the next day and bought brand new batteries, because I there called my husband and said, oh there my gosh. Go. And, but there that's what it was. So I never thought, I had to replace a battery in a hard wire system. Yes, yes. You still have batteries. Remember, if the power goes out, the hard wires don't work. So you have to have batteries for the backup. So if you have a power outage with a storm or a winter storm or something like that, power's down for a day or two, you still need the protection and you have batteries to protect you. And the first thing I did was get extra batteries. Yeah, very so good. So I idea. never have to run out and worry bulk. about that. Sure. Buy them in bulk. <laughs> so the first thing we did was change that battery. Sure. So it is important. Even if you think you're Place is hardwired, you don't need to, definitely you need uh, most to. Most definitely, yeah. Batteries are, are very important. Uh, and when they're hardwired, there should be an indicator of uh, beeping. The same rules apply. Replace your battery every, replace your, change your clocks, change your batteries. There you go. And that's getting to be time pretty yes, soon. Yes, October's coming up. This is when you get your pen and paper. We'll be right back because we want you to write down all the fabulous things that's happening at the Council on Aging.
So we're here with um, Captain Ian Zalone from the Fire Bureau uh, unit down in a city for the city of Somerville, down at Franny Road at the DPW, your new location. That's I'm great. sure you love it down there. Yes, we'll find that. And uh, we're talking about smoke detectors and how important it is. And we just uh, received a grant, which yes, I was very excited about. Uh, we I. worked on it together with the Grants Division, uh, the Fire Prevention Bureau, and the Council on Aging. Tell us a little bit about the grant and what it's going to do. Like you said, Cindy, we've received the grant from the federal government, and it's going to allow us to hire um, a firefighter and a fire investigation, fire protection officer to come out to the house. If you have a single family or two-family home, if you're 65 or older, we can come out and we're going to replace your smoke detectors, replace your batteries, make sure your house is fire safe, and we're going to go through that whole, whole process of doing that. It's going to be a great grant, and I think it's going to work well. And we're very excited about this. I think we have, um, how many smoke detectors are we going to be able to do? We isolated somewhere around 100 families that we may be able to help right, right off the bat, and that was you and I working together for a quick hit. And they're probably, I'm sure there'll be more. Um, there's There's... Room in the grant for 10 um, hearing impaired detectors. So they're the, the battery shakers. They will shake your bed and wake you up. Um, so they will be also done. The grant covers um, manpower to replace the old detectors, replace the bad batteries. We'll do a uh, safety checklist. We'll walk through the house to make sure your house is safe. It's not an inspection. So it's just we just want to make sure you're safe. You'll have a fire uh, prevention officer with you to go over some safety features in the home. Which is really exciting. Um, before we did a giveaway, it was, and this was many, many years ago, where we just handed it to them. And unfortunately, what happened was they had no way to put it up. So that's some of the stuff we talked sure. about, about having somebody, uh, a firefighter, go in and actually install. And that's Absolutely. what we're excited Absolutely. about, is that it's in the right location. It's doing the right thing. It's, it's where it's supposed to be. Yes, by code. We'll make sure that by code it's done. And it's the, the smoke detectors and the CO detectors are in the exact location they should be they're working properly and to make the homes fire safe and you know we don't want you to be alarmed about having a firefighter in in your home Absolutely they're not. not there to uh, ridicule you or, or tell you bad things they're there to help you encourage you um, find if there's an issue you know like maybe you shouldn't have that cord under the rug maybe a better way is to ride it around get get an electrician put a plug in do something safe to make you Absolutely. from getting hurt, having a fire, having any kind of incident happen. Um, it, it's such a, a great program that sure. we're going to be able to really help sure. the seniors. The prevention officer will be in there just to, to guide you on what you should be doing to keep yourself safe. They're not going to be in there to inspect you or, or, or make any problems for your home. We're just going to be in there to give you a guideline of how you should keep your home safe. And for the most important part is the smoke detectors and the CO detectors. And we're also working on a second part of that, and that's to work with some of the local hardware stores to sure. donate batteries. Because you may have a perfectly good um, smoke detector, right. and that is twofold, because we'll be able to go in and have you guys change the batteries um, and do that kind of stuff. Because, like you said, we don't want them climbing up on a ladder themselves, no. fall and break a hip. Nope. We don't so want that. you'll be able to do that piece of it and also... Um, Tell us whether or not they have a good smoke detector. Yes. You know, or to not sure. tell us, but tell them, sure. you know, this is really antiquated. We'll pull it off the wall, and if, it's, if it needs to be replaced, we'll have the, we'll have the material to replace it. We'll, we'll because sometimes it if it chirps, that doesn't necessarily mean that, it, it just may mean it, does, it doesn't work anymore. You know, some of, them, some of them may chirp because they just, they're tired, and they've been doing their job for a long time, and it's time to get replaced. Exactly. So we will, we'll, we'll make sure of that. We recommend uh, 10 years anyways, even if they're working fine, that you replace the smoke detector. So that's a recommendation from the fire department. And the other thing is you'll be able to take the old ones away. We will and we'll dispose them properly. We'll take them, we'll clean up the mess. We'll make sure everything's right. working order before we leave. Right. That's the best part about it. We're so excited. Now there will be an application process, and we'll talk more about that towards the end of the program. But I wanted to touch a little bit on um, the hearing impaired Sure. Um, smoke detectors. So tell us a little bit about how they work. Okay, as I mentioned, the, we have room for 10, I believe, uh, hearing, hearing impaired smoke detectors, which they're a, it's a bed shaker. It works like a smoke detector and it goes off, it detects the smoke, but it will vibrate the bed if you're in the bed or it will have a, a illuminated alarm. You see a light that will tell you to 
you have smoke in the house. So obviously, if you're not in your bed, you'll be notified. So those are those are going to be available for some of the hearing impaired people in the city. And that's going to be a great program. And one of the other things, I know that you also um, teach children about yes. fire safety. Yes. And I was thinking about this the other night, as I said, when my alarm went off. But putting a plan together on how to get everybody out. Yes, an escape plan. So important. I went to bed that night thinking about, okay, so I could do this and that and the other thing and who's going to sure. go. You know, so I really, for the first time, it hit me. Yep. I didn't have a plan. It, I teach all the kids the, the uh, SAFE program, students, student awareness of fire education. Um, I believe we're going to be calling this the Senior SAFE program. Yes. That, does that sound senior like the Senior program? SAFE program. So the That's Senior right. SAFE program. So uh, the students get taught... Uh, have an escape plan, um, have a meeting place when they come out to make sure they, they know everybody, everybody's out of the building. And we teach them stop, drop, and roll. We teach them call 911. Um, all, the, all the basics of fire safety we teach in, this, in the schools, they apply to the seniors just as much. They apply to everybody, of course. Absolutely. So you also have to have a plan to get out of the house. It'd be a good idea to have a meeting place. That we know everybody's out of the house. We'll meet at the same exact spot if there's a fire. And uh, the other thing is if your clothes catch on fire, how to do stop, drop, and roll. I understand some of the seniors may not be able to get down on the ground as easy, but those rules still apply. You should get, try and get down and roll around to make sure the fire's out. So all those rules that I teach the kids, they apply to the seniors also. And we're going to talk just a little bit about that in a few minutes. But speaking of children, I want you to take a quick look at the great time we had down at the Cross Street Center and we had a cook-off, and what we're doing is working with the Teen Empowerment Program at um, Cross Street, who are just upstairs from the Senior Center, and we're having um, some intergenerational program. So the kids are gonna cook for us this time, and then next time we're gonna go down and pick some stuff from Ralph and Jenny's garden, and we're gonna make a great dinner for the children, and so we'll be able to talk back and forth about whose meal was the best. We have some judges, so take a look at the great time we had. We'll be right back. So with me is Janine Lottie, who runs our um, is our uh, project coordinator up in at the Holland Street Center. So Janine, let want to talk a little bit about how the engagement started between Cross Street here and Teen Empowerment. Well, I don't know how many people know, but uh, Teen Empowerment is actually right upstairs, and we hear them all the time. And Danny McLaughlin, who's the coordinator up there, and I just chatted, and he chatted a little bit with Maria, and he said, you know, the kids would like to come down and cook for you. And he said, what about a cook-off? And I said, well, let's try that and see how it goes. And so today is an experiment. We're really excited about it. The kids have been in there since about 10 o'clock this morning frying up chicken and marinating chicken and I think it's going to be a really fun day. We have uh, our senior citizens are ready and willing to uh, taste everything and we're going to have a good time. So tell me what you made Teddy. Oh I made a uh, common Haitian fried chicken you know it's the best you can you can't get better you know yeah. And is there a secret recipe a secret little ingredient that mom puts in there that she taught you? I don't know I think I gotta ask it before I tell you. Can I, can I make a phone call right quick? I, I can't, I can't tell you right. that that's okay we know that it's really good cooking I am so happy they're doing it for us they all seem like lovely young people and everything will be wonderful I just hope they give us re re recipes well we thought about putting some of the recipes in our newsletter so doesn't that sound wonderful thank you very much for inviting us We have um, Genesis, your number one piece. We had, you got a 26 out of a possible 30. Um, and your second chicken got a 24 out of 30. So awesome job, awesome job. Danny, you got out of a possible 30, you got 22. Ooh, I'll take 22. Not bad at all. <laughs> Uh, number four was Teddy, and Teddy, out of a 30, you got 25. Yeah, we loved your chicken. Nice. And we had a tie. So she, Shaheem, yep. did I say it right? Yeah. Shaheem and Pat, come up front. Right, and where's Pat? Pat, Pat you come on up. Okay, Ryan, come on. Ryan's part of the team, good. Come on up. So it was both so good, we loved it both. Out of a 30, you got a 29.5. Woo! 
29.5. So I want to tell you that um, we wanted to say thank you so much, and you both are going to win a $10 gift certificate to Peenie's Pizza. <laughs> Go out for lunch, exactly. So on, on behalf of the Council on Aging and, and all the seniors here, we want to thank Danny, and we want to thank the Tina Empowerment Kids for being such good partners with us. And here's a challenge out to my seniors. We're going to cook chi um, Portuguese and Italian dinners and have them come sample that. And we'll do that in September. The challenge on, guys? All right. Thank you so much. We really enjoyed this. It was great. Everything was delicious. You're all winners in my heart. So thank you all very much. Welcome back. We had so much fun, and I have to tell you, the food was delicious. So stay tuned because we'll be cooking for the children now, and if you've got a great recipe or you want to come down and join us, please call us at the Council on Aging. We'd love to have you come and share some of your experience in cooking. So we're here today with uh, Captain Inz Alone from the Fire Bureau again, and we're very excited about the things that we have going on. We have the grant program that we're going to be able yep. to put some smoke detectors in. There'll be an application process for that, and we'll talk to that in about a, in a minute. Uh, we have, you're coming back in October and talk to us about some real safe issues, um, changing the batteries, change, making sure. sure you have a CO detector. And um, one of the, we are d developing a program called Senior, Senior Safe. Senior Safe plan. And um, Captain Inslin, you'll be heading that and working with us, coming into the senior buildings, coming into seniors' sure. homes, into the senior center and talking about that. We went over it before, but let's talk about the drop, stop, stop drop, stop, and, drop roll. and roll. Okay, yes. I'm going to yes. get it eventually. Yes. So if a senior can't get down to the ground, can they get into a chair? They can do the best they can to move around and smother the fire. The stop, drop, and roll is to smother a fire if your clothes catch on fire. So if you can get a blanket wrapped around you and get down, even if you got on the bed and rolled, um, you want to smother the fire to give it less oxygen so it will stop burning. And one of, the, one of the things you touched on earlier was smoking in bed. Yes. Huge, huge issue. It's been an issue for long, a long Since time. Since cigarettes now. have been yes, around. Yes. Tell us why a mattress fire burns so quickly and well, why it's, it's so dangerous. Well, it's polyester. It's it's a uh, it's not a man-made. It's a it's a synthetic object uh, materials, and it's made of pretty much plastic and very combustible materials, and they they go very quickly. And which then catches on to. You know, your, your Small own fires clothing, turn into big fires, big turn fires. into house fires. And one of the things is not trying to pull it anywhere. No, please do not. Just 911 is the call for the fire department, and we will come out. And even if you think you have it, you threw some water on it, please call the fire department. And don't do what I do. If your smoke detector goes off, please call 911 because yes. it's so important. I also want to rec uh, mention that if, if any of the seniors out there, um, a lot of them don't feel the need, they may burn their hand on a pod or, or have, a, have an issue, and it might be a medical issue and they're nervous about calling, please, that's what we're here for. We're here to help you guys, so just call the fire department and we'll come out. And Always be out. on the side of caution. Absolutely, absolutely. Pan fires, kitchen fires. You talked to, uh, to us about covering and smothering it. Yep, yep. That Put a Lid On It program was uh, developed by the um, Department of Fire Services. Uh, the old days, I think they used salt and they tried to smother it that way, but. If you have a grease fire, don't try and throw it in the kitchen sink. We're just going to spill and move the fire around. Put a lid on it. Let it cool. Don't leave it alone. If the fire extends anywhere out of the pan, please call the fire department. And, and again, you talked about little fire extinguishers. Yes. What is that fire, good for? A fire extinguisher in your kitchen is always a good idea. Um, if, you, if you can handle it and you know how to use it, you can use it. But by no means does that mean you don't call the fire department. If you always. can stop your fire... In the incipient stage, that's great. If not, please call the fire department and get out of the house. But should they call you anyways if the fire is out? Absolutely. You can call us for anything. That's what we. It's, that's our job. That's what, we, what we're here to do. So please call 911 or call the emergency number when you can. And I know you sometimes don't like, um, or not you, but the seniors don't like to have fire and the ambulance and everybody come. Sure. But it's so important because, you know, you've We're walked away. You. Right, you're there to help. But I know you can walk away from a little fire thinking, I have everything, and Absolutely. don't realize that something's burning. Absolutely. There may be 
extensions where you can't see and we have to go in there and it may look like we're doing more damage than actually was going to happen but we're looking for extended fire and we want to make sure the fire is out and that's the most important thing absolutely so back to the grant we're so excited about this grant and there will be an application process yep. so seniors will be encouraged elders in the city will be encouraged to come in um, or call us for an application they'll Correct. be available starting around september 15th you can call our office. There'll be some guidelines. We're putting the application together as we speak, um, and we'll process it on a first come, first serve basis. Mm -hmm. And how you are qualified. Right. So um, we encourage you all to call us. Uh, we'll be scheduling appointments. We'll schedule four or five together, three or four together we'll, we'll on a day. On, we'll work on the logistics. Yep. And, and then we'll probably do a, at least three or four a day, and four or five a day if we have the we have the volume. And what we'll do is we'll do it in the, in, you know, in your area. So your neighbor may be getting it. So if you're put off and you might have a date in, you know, next week or something, it's because we're trying to get everybody in the sure. one area. So That's you're right. not running all over the, the city and wasting time. Because yeah, it's going to be a great way to meet your local firefighter also. It'll be a great way to meet your local firefighter. It'll be a great way to do it. So we want to, um, we'll have the application process. We'll uh, meet with the fire bureau. We'll put that all together, we'll um, put a plan together and try to put that um, in perspective and get everybody ready to mm -hmm. go. Mm -hmm. So is there anything that, um, and again, the other thing with the 10 uh, here in Impeed, we'll work with our new disability commissioner, right. Betsy Allen, to try to help us. So um, if you know somebody, um, please call us, call Betsy Allen. Uh, we'll be able to work with her on that aspect. but. Um, as it'll we, be it'll be just just to clarify, Cindy, oh, sure. it'll be uh, single and two family homes, owner Only. occupied homes, sixty five or older will be the will be the uh, age. So it's it's really not for three families or apartments. It's it's more for the homeowner who can't get to that smoke detector. And you need to be an owner occupied. Owner occupied, yes, right. please. So there will be some guidelines that will go on Absolutely. to the application. So um, let's clarify that again. You need to be. These are just a few of the uh, rules and guidelines. You need to be owner occupied, which means you have to live in the house. Yes. You have to be over sixty five. That's right. And you have to be um, a single or a two a family. Single home. or two family, because there are different rules for yes, bigger. Yes, when you get to a three family or above, there's there's more rules and more ways of putting the smoke detectors hardwired and et cetera. With just a few seconds that we have left, is there one message that you really want to get out there that's the most important thing? If you if they learned one thing today, what would that be? Check your smoke detectors. We say it all the time. Please make sure your smoke detectors are in working order. Smoke detectors save lives. And a really quick thought, um, we know there's been a lot of fires going on. Briefly, do you want to just tell us about those fires? I can comment briefly on that, yes. Uh, the investigation is still going on for many of the fires. Um, the mayor has made it known that uh, of the nine fires that they've had in the last few months, three have now been ruled intentional, three as accidental, and then three are under investigation. And the investigation unit is still working on that. And are there some safety tips? Um, these, this, these safety tips apply all the time, but you want to make sure that uh, you remove any flammable items from the area and around your home, gas cans, anything like that, pile of leaves, papers. You want to get any overstuffed furniture off your porches. Keep your home well lit. Keep your home secure. And if you have any tips, you can report them to the, uh, you can call the Salmon Police Department. <laughs> Well, again, thank you so much for being here. You've thank always you. informative. You always give us great information. This is just the first of many endeavors that we're going to do together with the fire department, and we're very excited about that. So get ready to look. We'll put something in our newsletter or send a flyer out to everybody, letting, us, letting everybody know. We'll do a media alert that the applications are available, and we look forward to hearing you. Until next month, have a wonderful day.